Hey everyone, welcome back to So Renew Fashion. Today I wanted to go over the basics of your sewing machine and how to set it up and use it so that beginners can get into sewing a little bit easier. It can be confusing to start sewing on your own, so I wanted to make a three-part series to help get you started off on the right foot. In this part, I'm gonna go over the basics of your sewing machine, how to thread your sewing machine, and what needles to use. So let's get into it. First, you wanna get to know your machine. Now, everyone will have a different machine, so it will be slightly different for each. And if you are confused with all the buttons and where things are on your own machine, you might have to look up another video for your specific machine. But generally, they're all going to have the same things. So as long as you know your equivalent on your machine, you should be good. So obviously each machine is going to have a needle right here and I have mine threaded. So I have my needle in here. This is your presser foot. So this, when it goes down, will hold your fabric in place while sewing so that it doesn't move around. This makes sure your stitching is even and steady. So you need this down whenever you're sewing. If you're sewing with it up, you're gonna have lots of issues. So just whenever you have your fabric in, put it down. You're also under here. Now, some people will have a front loading and some people will have a top loading. So instead of this, being able to come off, they will have an area up here for it to come off. But, and mine is like broken, so it just kind of falls down. This is where your bobbin case is. So if I pull this out, this is my bobbin. And see, it's wound with some white thread. This is my bobbin case. So this holds the bobbin thread, and it also provides a bit of tension because you want a little bit of tension in your bobbin as well as your top thread. So to be able to wind your bobbin with thread, you're going to want to put your spool of thread on like you would normally be sewing and follow the arrows for winding your bobbin. So I need to twist it around this once and then the thread comes this way. I'm going to put it through one of the holes in my bobbin and attach it on here. This is what winds the bobbin for you. And you're gonna have to push it until it clicks. And then you're gonna press down on your sewing foot as if you're sewing. But when this is over, it's going to wind the bobbin instead of sewing. I like to hold the thread that is sticking out up here for a little bit just so that it doesn't come unwound. When you've got a bit on, you can let go. You can just cut the extra thread so it's not as long and continue until your bobbin is full. Now you can just push it this way to make sure that your machine knows you're not winding the bobbin anymore. Cut your thread and now you have a fully wound bobbin. Don't forget when you're re-threading to undo what you had thread for your bobbin because if it's still on this, it's going to mess up when you're sewing. So just thread your machine as normal. So when you have a wound bobbin, you're going to want the thread to come out in this little slot in this direction. So I'll just show you how mine goes in. I have my thread in the front here and I'm going to put it in and there's a notch here. So there's a notch here that you want the thread to be in because I'm going to pull it underneath here and it's going to click in place. And this provides tension to your bobbin. So see, I can hold it and it's not slipping out. It should not slip out. Well, unless you do that, but so this provides tension here. This little arm here needs to match up with a space here. So I'm going to put it in. 
and you want to hold this arm out to put it in. And then it should be locked in place. You want to leave this tail of thread out. And we're going to get to that in a second. So to thread your machine, and each machine will be different, I'm going to put my thread on here. I have this little thing that stops the thread from just popping off. And usually there will be arrows on your machine, so you can just follow along. So I'm going to come down here, come down, and for mine, I go around this curve up and I'm wanting to go around this little metal part here and this will catch the thread and hold on to it. So this is an important part that I find on my machine when I'm sewing or if I incorrectly thread it, it will pop out here and then that will cause some issues. And then it comes down and then once I get to my needle, you're going to want to slide it through here that little bar to keep it in place and some people will have an automatic threader I just thread it myself through the needle from front to back like that you want to make sure you have a bit of a tail so then to pick up the bobbin thread because you don't want this on the bottom, it could get caught and get stuck and cause some knots. You're going to want to hand crank the needle down. You're going to hand crank it. It's going to go around. See, it's caught down here. It's hard to see. It's going to go around, catch the bobbin thread, and then you can pull it up here. So now I have my bobbin thread coming out of the top down here. So I like to put them both under the presser foot and to the back. So when I start sewing, I have a tail here. Whenever you start sewing, you want to pull this tail to make sure it's not getting caught underneath. So now your machine is properly threaded. So now I'm going to turn on my machine over here and you're going to have it plugged in to a foot pedal. So this foot pedal, you press to control the speed of sewing. Another way is to hand crank. Now this can be useful for if you need to go really slow over a certain part, or if you wanna put your needle in to turn a corner. So the hand crank is right here, and this will crank your needle down and up. And this is what I used to pull up the bobbin thread. Now, I would say, to only crank this forwards towards you. It's not good for you to crank it backwards. You could do it slightly, just a little bit, but my recommendation is try to only go forwards because I think it can cause some timing issues. This dial right here is my tension. The standard is around five. I wouldn't really deviate. I only use it around five. If five isn't doing well for you, you can adjust it and test out different tensions for your machine, but it could also be material dependent on what you're sewing with. It's not good to change the tension a lot. It can cause a bit of issues. So just try to keep this standard, something that works. So over here, this is going to be different for everybody because mine has a little screen and I have all these different stitch options. Some people will only have a crank with a couple of options. So for me, this is my different stitch types with zero, zero being a straight stitch. This will be your most common stitch. A straight stitch is used for side seams, hemming, a lot of stuff. You're gonna use this on non-stretch fabric. Now, a zigzag stitch, which is number three for me, or a stretch stitch, which looks like a lightning bolt. You would use these on stretchy materials and this helps the fabric stretch without the seam ripping because if you sew a straight stitch on a stretchy material and then it stretches when you wear it, the seam will break. So if you're using a stretchy material, use either a zigzag or a stretch stitch. Now, a zigzag stitch can also be used if you do not have a serger and you want to finish the raw edge of your fabric so that it doesn't fray. This will be useful for that to go over the edge and encapsulate those raw edges. What I also have here is my stitch 
distance and length or width and length. The width would only be for stitches that go back and forth, so not a straight stitch. A straight stitch, this will just position your needle in a different spot. But if you want it in the center, leave it as is. So for me, that's a 3.5. But if you're doing a zigzag stitch, the width, you can change it to be smaller or larger, depending on how big you want your zigzag to be. Now your stitch length, my standard is a 2.5. You would want to keep it at a standard around this for most of your seams, like your side seams, your hem. But say you want to do a basting stitch or something else, you would make it a longer stitch length, like a four or 4.5. And this would be good for a basting stitch. So if you're putting together swimwear before you serge or zigzag, or if you want to baste it so you can gather to make a nice flowy skirt or something, then you would want a larger stitch length so that you can use a basting stitch. Now we're going to talk about needles. There are so many different types of needles like stretch, leather, ballpoint, denim, twin stretch, but the most used needles, I would say, and if you're a beginner and you just want to get one pack of needles, I would say get a universal pack with multiple different sizes. This is a universal pack with the smallest being a 7010, a lot of 8012s, and then the largest being a 9014. If I can give you a general just knowledge to go by or basis to go by, the smaller the number will be for thinner fabrics, the larger the number is for thicker fabrics. So if you have some very thin fabric, you could go for a 7010 or even smaller, you know, there's sometimes a 60. And if you have thicker fabrics, you want to go for a 9014 or there's an 100, so or larger even. But this this is a good pack to start off with that will hit most of the bases so you're not buying a ton of different types of needles. If you're going to get into a lot of knits or stretch fabrics, I would recommend ballpoint or stretch needles. These are way more useful for knit and stretchy fabrics, whereas the universal isn't as great. I'd say it's more for non-stretch fabrics but you can get away with it. So I'm not saying you need to buy a ton of different needles, but if you can, it is useful. A really great one for stretch fabrics is a twin stretch needle. I'm not going to go into detail on how to use this, but with this one, you have two upper threads, which you can do on your sewing machine. You have two upper threads and a bottom thread, and this will give you the standard double line on top of your stretch fabrics when you hem it. This is great for hemming stretch fabrics, but you can also get away with doing a zigzag stitch. So you don't have to buy another needle and figure out how to use it. But if you do get it, I love the way this looks because it looks a lot more professional. With needles as well, if you are bad at guessing which one you need, you can always look up what needle to use for the fabric you're using. It's just, if you wanna give a general guess, go lower number for thinner, higher number for thicker. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll get into some of the basic stitches that you need to know and how you can use them. Bye.